enjoyed the first um the dog Did first aid course with, with Bridget really it was informative with, it was uh, well paced um, and was it was just right for me and for my daughter as well who joined for most of it um we're about to get a little puppy and um this has made us feel just really well prepared now and and reassured that we'll be able to to look after our puppy really well so thank you set up a business about four years ago called Pet Leader Techniques, um, which is just really behavioural, dog behaviourist. Um, um, and I, I've done, um, I did this because I uh, took on a little rescue dog, Terrier, Jack Russell Cross, who was absolute uh, nightmare meeting other dogs. Absolutely perfect with people, but hated other dogs. And I thought I needed to sort her out. So I did lots of investigating and I looked at all the... Um, people who I thought trained how I wanted to learn, um, all balanced trainers. And I went to America, did a couple of tricks there, trips there and learnt from lots of really um, amazing trainers um, who all do balanced training. So they do all spectrums of correct the bad behaviour, reward the good behaviour. Um, and taking it from there, I, I haven't completely sorted my little dog out, but she's so much better than she was. She can tolerate being around other dogs now. Um, she can't do face-to-face -face meetings unless she's really known them for a long time. Um, but uh, when you have new dogs, jobs, a uh, dog, sorry. But um, anyway, I, from now on, I've been able to help other people with dogs from all that I've learned from. But I'm always continuing to learn. So wow. that's that's where I come from. America, that's that's serious stuff, isn't it? <laughs> it was fantastic. Amazing I bet it experience. Was. I bet it was. That's really good. Really good. So do you think that people will have noticed many changes in their dog's behaviour whilst we're going through this social distancing period? Yes, it's quite likely they have. Um, quite often because you've been at home a lot more, you've probably been giving your dog a lot more um, <clears throat> attention. Um, you might find that they get a bit more needy, sort of following you around the house a bit more, um, perhaps not getting enough rest if you're at work all day. So you give them a good walk in the morning, then you leave them for the whole day. They have all that time to sleep. Um, whereas if you're around the day all the time and they're following you around, they're perhaps not sleeping enough. And this can come out um, in different behaviours. Um, could be pacing around the house, following you around, a little bit needy, keep nudging you for a stroke. Um, and could be excitement, getting overexcited or overanxious about noises and things. And this can all really just be from the fact they're not getting enough sleep and they're just, they've become needy dogs. So you just um, need to watch out for this and make sure that you're not um, stroking them when they're nudging you for attention because that's rewarding needy behaviour. And I guess perhaps a lot of uh, dogs aren't getting as much rest, especially if there's lots of people in the house and children home, obviously from school all the time at the moment. Perhaps the dog isn't getting as much rest as, as they would do normally. Exactly right. I mean, dogs generally sleep for 20 hours a day, which is quite a long time when you think about it. Um, so really, they only need a couple of walks a day maximum. They don't need to walk for hours and hours and hours to wear them out. Um, you really need to walk them your normal walks, um, you know, a little bit longer if you like being out, getting some fresh air yourself, but don't overdo it. Um, and then just make sure when you come back, give them their so they've had a nice walk give them their breakfast if they have breakfast in the morning and then to, they must go to their beds then so they should be resting so if they keep coming out their beds then just to keep putting them back in again um doesn't matter how many times they come out just say no go back to your bed and eventually they'll just give a big sigh <laughs> Okay, thank you. I'll rest now then. Thank you for telling me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and can actually, I mean, obviously our dogs are going to be getting a lot more um, in the way of fuss and attention and, you know, I, you know, either from us ourselves or from, you know, other family members that are there, they're going to be kind of sort of almost overstroked or over fussed. Can that have an impact on their behaviour? Yes, absolutely. It does. Because, um, I mean, if really your affection should be like gold dust to your dog. So they must really be earning it. And when I say earning it, just basically they must be giving you the right behaviour, so calm. So if you're stroking them when they're excited or when they're nudging you or when they've got a ball and they drop it at your feet, um, you're giving them attention and they're demanding the attention, which is the wrong time to, to give them what they want. 
Um, so if they come and nudge you, then you just say no, go to your bed. And then a few minutes later, you can call them over and then stroke them. So it's on your terms. And what could the impact, I mean, if we do give them too much attention, what could be the impact on their kind of behaviour going forward? Well, it can just make them um, overexcited and over anxious about things. And basically, um, they, they start to feel that they're in charge mm -hmm. um, rather than you being in charge of um, you know, what they do. So they'll start demanding things. They might look at you and bark. Um, you know, drop a ball at your feet and bark at you, say, come on, I want to play now. So you've got to, if that happens, you say, no, go to your bed. Um, and then a few minutes later, once they settle, then you can get the ball and play with them for a set time. Um, and then, so you start the game, you stop the game. Mm -hmm. It's just that they can just get very demanding. Um, you know, they start calling the tune rather than you deciding when things happen. Um, that's not good for a dog. They're mm. not decision makers, and it make the if they start making decisions when they shouldn't be, um, it can just bring out all sorts of different behaviour behaviours that you don't want. Um, but it can be sorted out. It's not it's not a long term problem. It just means changing your behaviour will change their behaviour, mm. and always do it in the right way with calmness. So calm and confidence, never shouting. This is what I want you to do, um, and that will just they'll mirror what how you are. Just remember that your dogs are your mirrors. Oh, poor dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. And, and that's another thing to come to is the fact that everybody's quite anxious at the moment with all the virus. Mm. Um, so, you know, if we're anxious, then our dogs will be picking up on that. So just remember lots of um, try and stay in the now, try and stay in the moment, because that's how our dogs like to live. And that, mm. that's how we keep them balanced. If we can be in the moment as well yeah so if, if people are listening to this and they're kind of thinking oh actually i've kind of fallen into the trap of of this you know i have been giving them too much attention and i have noticed this behavior how should they approach kind of getting the status quo back and and changing absolutely. back yeah absolutely it's it's very easy to fix you just go back to your how you used to be so if you know don't give your dog more than you give them on a, you used to give them on a normally daily basis so if you go to work in the you know if you used to go to work then try and limit your what you do with your dog to the same as when you were going to work so you know similar amounts of walks similar amounts of affection um you know if you used to have a cuddle in the evenings when you're watching tv you invite them up on the settee that's fine carry on doing that at the times that you used to do it previously so just go back to your previous routines really um mm. and you know limit limit your stroking them two times when um when you feel they've earned it so if they're really nice and calm then they can have a stroke so it's very very easy to fix just go back to how you were before um so you know you might find that you need to stroke your dog more because you might be a little bit anxious but just remember how that's affecting your dog so mm. um just try and be aware of what what you're doing and how you're affecting your dog um, and you know, and, and limit limit the stroking to times when you feel that they are um, nice and calm, and um, and earn it rather than being needy. You know, mm. And dogs very much like structure, don't they? A lot of dogs like a structure and a routine anyway, so they probably react better when they've got structure. Absolutely, absolutely. Or you know, uh, there's nothing wrong. They'll be perfectly happy with you being around the house. Um, if you just tell them what you want them to do, you know, just what I mean by that is just go to your bed or, you know, whatever room you're in, have a have an area where you can just point out and say, I want you to settle down now while I'm doing this. You know, if you're working for, on your computer, then don't let them keep fussing you and nudging you for attention while you're working. Just say, no, go to your bed. Um, or if you're watching TV, just say, no, go to your bed or whatever you're doing. Um, but obviously you have your normal times when you mm -hmm. used to have a cuddle get them up on the settee with you so that's absolutely fine but just try not to overdo the things that you that are unusual that you don't normally do you know so. and if we get back to to our routines like that and to our structure like that if we've got dogs that have maybe suffered previously with sort of with separation anxiety um with having to sort of leave them again now 
if we maintain the structure, is there going to be less impact? Or do we think that dogs that have had separation anxiety are going to kind of almost take it up a level when we go back to work? Yeah, it's really, it's really important that you um, go back to your previous routines and you yourself have to be calm and not worry about it. Because if you worry about your dog becoming um, anxious again, um, it redeveloping, then your dog will pick up on you worrying. Mm -hmm. So just, just go back to, you've got to be calm yourself, go back to all the routine you did before um, and don't worry about it. And your dog will remember how it was you know they don't forget things training is just repeat 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 so if you if you manage to sort it out before the separation anxiety you will be able to revert back um i had um one of my clients who's got two lovely um basset hands uh, who had separation anxiety whenever she left and she was worried about that but she's been practicing reinstating it again and they've been absolutely fine. So they, they do remember, you know, obviously routines. As long as you can be calm yourself and not worry about it. Okay. No, that that's that's really worth uh, worth people knowing. Um, if we move on to sort of uh, dogs that are maybe reactive or people that have had what they call reactive dogs, perhaps when they're out on the lead and and they they you know they um, show you know some kind of reactivity to other dogs obviously at the moment because we're socially distancing people are making sure they're keeping their dogs under control on a lead at least two meters apart so that's giving some of those dogs a bit of breathing space but do we think that maybe reactivity in dogs may increase once people start going across the fields and just letting them all off the lead um, how can we make sure that we don't find ourselves in that situation yeah, well, it's really important that um, your dog um, pays attention to you. So um, just practice, you can practice um, the art of attention just by uh, when your dog looks at you, say yes, and then give them a treat or give them a pat. So you have a marker word. Yes means what you've done is brilliant. That's great. So, you know, give them a reward for that. So whenever you let your dog off the lead, they should be sitting calmly beside you uh, before you let them off. Mm -hmm. And then they should look at you and then you can say, um, you know, yes, and then give them a treat. So just keep practicing that so that you get them to pay attention to you and certainly never let a dog off the lead until he's absolutely calm. So sitting nicely calm, looks at you and then slip the lead, let him go. Um, you can have a release word break. That means free time so they can do what they like. But just really, they should be paying attention to you before you let them off the lead anyway. Um, they should be calm, um, sitting calmly beside you. Um, other dogs around as well, hopefully, because they'll pick up on your dog's calmness. That will Then they'll approach them with different energy. Um, so any, you shouldn't really have any problems with reactivity as long as you're not, your dog isn't completely fired, off, fired up when you let them off the lead. Mm -hmm. So always, you know, calmness before you let them off doesn't matter how much you think they're going to have a fantastic time running free um, mm. they, you still must have your routine where you know just general sort of obedience training um that they they're not sort of like a fired gun you know yeah. as soon as you let them off the leap they sort of shut off <laughs> somewhere. and they just practice recall as well so and you can do lots of um down stays you know while you've got them on the lead in the middle of a field um on a long line so they can't run off all over the place and then if they move, just calmly take them back again. If they move, calmly take them back again. If you repeat that, eventually they'll just stay there and then you can go back to them, give them a reward or practice recall on a long line. And all this will be bode well for when they're off the lead again because mm -hmm. they'll have lots of, um, they'll realise that actually you're um, in charge of what they're doing and, and they don't get anything without your say-so. So rather than them just doing whatever they like. So I guess a lot of those things are things that we can practice at home as well, aren't they? While we can't be out and they can't be off the lead, the sun of making sure they're paying attention to you and looking yeah. at you and yeah. making sure that, you know, and even their recall, we can practice at home, can't yeah, we? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I don't say, um, you know, I don't want you to like hold a treat up to your eye and say, look, 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 like often you see people doing when they're doing like puppy training and things. You just got to hold your treat behind your back and then when they get eye contact with you, then you go, yes, and then give them the treat. So they're not looking at the treat. They're not looking at a ball or whatever else you're giving them. They're looking eye contact with you. 
that's really important um, for um, getting their attention. Mm. They realise that you're important, so they have to keep paying attention to where you are, what you're doing, what's happening next. Yeah, and I think that that's a really important point, actually, isn't it? Is it, it's you that you want them to be looking at, not what yeah. you've got in your hands. Exactly. Quite often, you know, you say, look, and the dog's fixating on your hand because there's a ball in your hand or there's a piece of cheese in your hand. They're not looking, they don't care about you. They just yeah. care about what's in your hand. So. <laughs> so, yeah. no, that, that, that makes a lot of sense, actually. So what kind of things can we do with our dogs i mean obviously some dogs are getting a lot more exercise than normal because every member of the family is taking them for a walk um some dogs aren't getting as many walks as they would do normally but i mean we know that kind of mental stimulation is just as tiring as as physical exercise for a dog what kind of things to mentally stimulate our dogs can we be doing at the moment well really what i find is really tiring for dogs is the art of doing nothing um, in the house um, or in the garden you tell them where you want them to go the exact spot you know maybe put a mat down or put their bed down or, or something or a, you know some sort of marker so you know where you've got to um, they've got to stay and that's where you want them to go you don't have to say stay you just put them there drop the lead walk away if they move come back pick the lead up guide them back to that spot again and just keep repeating that and then them just being in that exact spot where you've put them for half an hour and then you can release them um, is incredibly tiring. So quite often dogs, people think that they've got to keep doing, um, playing tricks, you know, play ball games, walk them even further to wear them out. Actually, it's almost the opposite. Sometimes just getting them to do nothing and stay in that one spot um, is more tiring than um, running around after a ball for mm. three hours. No, that's really interesting. And obviously a lot of people at the moment have um, maybe got new puppies that they feel like they, they're missing out on perhaps some of those socialisation experiences that are so important when puppies are young. So what advice could you give people about managing that? Well, I mean, the art of um, socialisation, especially with puppies, is really important that they have impulse control. And to do that, a dog dogs can socialize from two three meters away just by getting them to sit calmly while maybe you have a chat with somebody from uh, you know the correct distance um, and and not keep pulling you and yapping and wanting to go and say hello to the dog is really important so this is a great time to practice this and also quite often because we've got this social distancing that we have to stick to at the moment it stops people coming up and wanting to fuss your puppy so and often you know you have no control over that they go oh i love puppies i love puppies and, they're straight. and then the puppy go completely crazy and jumps up all the time so it's, it's really hard to with the impulse control if people keep coming up and want to fuss your dog mm. so they have to be calm sit calmly and just while you're chatting they have to just basically basically be patient patient and then when um you know when you do when we can sort of greet people again a bit closer then this will teach your puppy that has to sit really calmly and when he's calm then the person can come and say hello in a, in a calm way rather than get them all fired up and excited again so you want your dog to be stroked and greeted but you also want them to understand that they can't keep jumping up at people mm. but the difficulty is people go oh i love puppies that's okay i don't mind them jumping up and it just creates a really hard problem when you're trying to train them you know to say no stand back i don't want you to get my puppy excited <laughs> you it, know, it when they're little, but when they get bigger and they jump up that's you don't want that do you and they've got yeah. no it's a real challenge i mean i found that with both of mine when they were puppies it, you know you are out walking them and people are kind of bending down and stroking them and and they you know they, they tend not to even ask first they're just kind of in there with the puppy but then when the dogs get bigger they they kind of want to then they don't like the fact that the dog wants to talk to everybody so yeah, exactly. um so it's probably actually a slightly easier time to train your puppies to ignore people right now yeah i think so i think it, because we haven't got to keep saying to people no stand back oh, she's in trailing i don't want them to i don't want to yeah. be stroked to them yeah. Yeah. yeah you're right okay and then obviously people might also be having a problem walking their dogs on the lead perhaps dogs that aren't used to doing a lot of walking on the lead um, and are now having to that um, their dogs might be pulling they might be pullers on the lead is there anything that people can work on whilst they're walking their dogs to try and kind of correct that behavior 
Yeah, well, um, it's important to look at what um, leads they're walking on. I, I'm not a great fan. If you've got a pulling dog, just walking in a flat buckled collar um, isn't really helping a lot. So I would, you know, look at the leads. Some people like harnesses. Um, I don't mind harnesses if the dog's walking okay. I'm not a great fan if they're pullers, but um, uh, personally, I like just a basic leash that loops around the neck and then it, it gets, you just position it so that it's just below the ears, but above the throat so that it, it um, and then it, the, the keeper goes down tight so that it holds it in place. And then you can have a conversation. So if the dog pulls, then you can give them a little check um, to correct them. Um, or you can use your marker training. So, that, you know, you can, if they pull, you stop and then wait for them to look at you. Then you go, yes give them a treat and then carry on walking so they're not if you if you've got a dog that pulls and they continue to pull while you're walking all you're doing by moving forward is saying I don't mind you pulling so if they pull you have to stop or change direction or step into them just to say no I don't want you to do this um, you know you can't continue if you've got a dog that pulls you can't continue you have to do something about it otherwise it just teaching them bad habits basically and you're just endorsing what they're doing by moving forward with it uh, with the dog um, so yeah you know lots of it, the art of attention so mark training getting eye contact before you move so nice loose lead so your arms are nice and relaxed um, and but short but not tight so if they do pull just a little check to correct um, it's it's something that can be fixed quite easily but you just need patience and time so this is the perfect time really isn't it that if we've got all this time to to work on these things <laughs> if we can't work you know if we're not working anyway yeah no absolutely it's definitely the, the the time to be doing it and i and i think also you know i know we've discussed before making sure when you're walking your dogs that you're unpredictable so you know you're not walking the same route you're not crossing the road in the same place yeah. um, and just creating that bit of unpredictability gets yeah. their attention onto you yeah anyway, isn't it? that's exactly right if you're going on the same walks every day then they'll get really excited about it. they know there's a really good piece of grass they're going to sniff just up the road so you know they'll pull drag you to it almost so yeah try and do different walks then you're keeping it um keeping it as you say unpredictable so they've got to think about what you're doing and and you're in charge of the walk don't let them um, sniff and pee wherever they like they can have permission to sniff and pee but um, first of all you must do a little bit of structured walk where they're walking nicely beside you um, and then you can give them permission and then they can have free time to do whatever they like you just to follow them around and let them sniff you know if you if we can't let them off the lead at the moment then just use a longer lead so that they can have a bit of freedom to walk you know sort of 10 feet beside you if you're in a field um, but but then you call them back in and you do a bit of structure so they're walking nicely beside you just in follower mode you know for some of the time so mix it up so you have like 20 percent of your walk is in structured walk 20 percent might be free time doing whatever they like and then 20 percent sorry how many have i got <laughs> i've got i've got enough percent here and then maybe another bit where you're doing some dance stage you know um where they they're doing a little bit of obedience the art of, art of attention the marker words and things so. yeah and and those things as well even when our dogs are off lead normally um we should still be really engaging with our dogs shouldn't we when, when they're off lead rather than just letting them self-reward by finding other things yeah exactly and, and you should be the most important thing in your dog's life so you know you need to um build up that that um, importance with your marker words and your uh, lots of recall um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be food rewards it can be a toy mm -hmm. or it just can be affection don't give them everything so just do either food either a toy either affection don't give them food and affection so mm -hmm. you know make it so that they you know, get one thing rather than the whole lot in one go <laughs> yeah no that 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 makes perfect sense i mean i've i've found that um obviously while we are having to make sure that we are keeping our distance uh, as you know i do canny cross um, so I've been using my canny cross equipment quite a lot and um, sort of doing some canny trekking with the dogs. So taking them for the walks on their canny cross equipment because those bungees are two metres long, which is great because it means that I'm actually walking hands free. My dogs have got some freedom to have a sniff around and enjoy their environment, but I've got them under control. But I don't walk them on that 
to the field or back from the field they are on their normal short leads yeah. so they do some lead work and some you know having to walk nicely and controlled then they get their time where they can rummage around while they're on mechanicals yeah. and then they're back on their short leads again so you yeah. can kind of mix it up can't you in terms absolutely. of what leads you use and yeah. where yeah yeah that's absolutely perfect so the short leads for the structure and then the the canny cross leads for the the more the free time mm -hmm. more freedom and sniffing and stuff yeah, yeah. it's really good that's that's brilliant thank you well, i think we've given people a lot of things to think about and things that they can do at home which is great if people want to contact you and find out more information what's the best way for them to contact you yeah um well i've got a website um www.packleadertechniques.co.uk and it's got my phone number and um, email and everything on there so yeah give me give me a call that'd be great Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And I'll speak to you soon. Fantastic. I appreciate it. Thank you.